elderberry syrup. So you started making this... A long time ago. Many, many moons ago right. at our house. Yes. And then you mm -hmm. forced me into this restaurant thing. Right, I was like, we're doing it. I don't care if you want to or not. Right. Yep. And then you started making it last year, I think, for yeah. people in the community. Mm -hmm. And now people are begging for it. I know, I haven't gotten it ready yet this year. And it's, I mean, I thought it was still too early, but apparently it's not. People are already getting yeah. the sniffles and such. So So you're gonna, you're gonna pull the curtain back. A little bit. Yeah. Take us behind the line. Mm-hmm. And make the dotted lime elderberry syrup. Yeah, so I call it upgraded elderberry syrup because typically elderberry syrup is elderberries. Um, maybe there's some spices in there, but I really felt like for what it's used for, which we are not medical professionals. We're not telling people how to take medication or anything like that, but- um, Or how to sanitize anything. Right, and we're not using any kind of health claims, anything like that. But traditionally people would use elderberries um, and make them into a concentrate and add honey and call it elderberry syrup. But um, I really felt like adding some of these other items was, was really worthwhile. So um, what we do here at The Lime, what I really do, because you don't make elderberry. Um, okay, so we start with... But, but you used to, like, pick these from trees by our house, well, right? Well, it's a, it's a weed. It, it grows everywhere around here. You can get elderberry on the side of the road. You can, you know, if you have any kind of land at all, you probably have elderberries growing. Um, the tip for that would be in the spring when they bloom, they look a lot like a really big baby's breath. So, like, you'll see these... Um, palm size, like sprays of white, tiny white flowers, mark them somehow. So like you can go to Tractor Supply and you can get the like orange tape or yellow tape. And so I've got some pink tape up in the woods that I've marked like the pawpaw trees with. So you can, you can actually mark your elderberry. What's a, uh, we don't need to go down that it's road. It's the only native fruit to Tennessee. So you can mark your, your elderberry shrubs and then you come back in the fall when the berries are, are full and ready to be picked and they are where the flowers used to be there's all these black gold like uh shiny berries but you didn't pick these no i bought these um because we are selling them and, and I've, them. i buy commercially available organic you haven't told me to do this but i'm assuming they go in this pot they of go in that pot so the ratios can all like you can figure that out on your own like how much you want to do of each thing depending on sort of what you want to use it for. So um, elderberries are um, an antiviral. They're an antioxidant. And what do you, don't eat that. You're gonna break your teeth. What is it? <laughs> That's next. We're still on elderberries. Okay, okay. antioxidant, antiviral. And Anti-inflammatory. So like Advil is um, a, a pharmaceutical anti-inflammatory, so elderberries would be a natural anti-inflammatory. So if I'm getting on your nerves? And I feel inflamed? Then eat some elderberries? I, right, right, yes. Anyway, um, so that's why they, they help when you're not feeling well, is because typically that's an inflammation response in the body. So you have your elderberries. Okay, next, we're gonna, we got a ro rose hip. These are hawthorn berries. So the same thing, I bought them organic and dried. Yeah, go ahead. They are actually um, really great for heart health, for blood pressure. They're also an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and um, they taste really good. So those are in there. And then these are rose hips. So when you have a rose shrub that grows roses, um, the base of the rose, you'll get a rose hip. And that is um, basically the seed pod of a rose. Um, these are organic dried rose hips. Now the interesting thing about rose hips, they actually have more vitamin C um, pound for pound than any other uh, fruit or vegetable. So um, I wrote myself a note and oranges have 53 micrograms of vitamin C per 100 grams and rose hips have 2,000. So they're very concentrated for vitamin C. Now hang on there chef, rush your wife out of her segment. Okay. This is fresh ginger, and um, I liked this one because 
it was full and nice and then you broke it. But um That's the story of our life. <laughs> I had a thing and I liked it and then he broke it and this is why we can't have nice things. So um I like ginger as a, an additive to the elderberry syrup because um when you look at ginger it sort of looks like a hand or like you know joints on the body and it's really interesting to me how um, fruits and vegetables tend to sort of mimic the parts of the body that they help with. So like when you cut open a carrot and it looks like an eyeball, carrots are good for eyesight. So I thought that was pretty cool. So these sort of look like a hand or some toes or something like that. They're, why are you laughing at me? It's true. I'm just thinking of all the fruits and vegetables and what there, they might help. There are some things that, that help things. Okay. Just saying. Anyway, ginger. Um, is, you know, similar to like joints on fingers or, or toes or things like that. It's also a really great anti-inflammatory. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna, I'll let you kind of slice that up. Um, you're the chef, you, you knife things. So the active All ingredient, no, just like that much of it. Do you like, peel it? No. Why not? Because we're not gonna eat that and we're not worried about fibers and stuff like that. We just want the ginger all, um, which is the active ingredient in the ginger. We want that to uh, steep into the liquid that we're making there. Here's that word, steep. Steep. Um, so ginger is an antibacterial as well. So you can actually take ginger and you can um, liquefy some coconut oil and uh, steep some ginger in that, bring it up just you know slightly to a, a, a nice warm temperature. And you can infuse some coconut oil with ginger and use it as a mouthwash because it'll help with things like gingivitis or um, periodontal disease uh, bacteria. So they're kind of like... They're all kind of floating in there. They're, they're swelling up. Yeah, they're supposed to. They're dehydrated and dried. Could we, could we call so, it swole elderberry? No. Nope. Um, so this is turmeric. and He's crowding me. <laughs> turmeric is sort of related to ginger. They have a lot of the same properties. But um, turmeric contains the uh, active ingredient is curcumin. So you've heard of curcumin, like people take a curcumin sub, uh, supplement. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. Um, it's an antifungal, antiviral, anti-inflammatory. It contains beta carotene, vitamin C, iron, potassium, zinc, lots of good things. It's generally an amazing um, little root that we're gonna throw in there. Right. So, so you can get fresh turmeric at the grocery store. By the so ginger. why, because we're we're gonna start selling this at the restaurant. Uh -huh. Why are we showing people how to make it? Because the thing is, is that when you're talking about something like elderberry syrup, about a third of your bottle of elderberry syrup, yes, that's it. Throw that on the stove. Um, about a third of your bottle of elderberry syrup is gonna be honey, and so what we do is use a local honey. It's a raw local honey that's grown within about 15 miles of the restaurant here in, in Columbia. And the reason why we use a raw local honey is because the um, bees, the pollinators, have actually collected pollen from local plants that we have to this area, which is gonna help with our inflammation response to those different pollination situations that we've got going on in the area. Right. So when people So they need local honey to them, we need local honey to us. Okay. Okay. Yep, so that's on the stove. That's on the stove. That's it, that's all that goes in there? That's all that goes in there. Super easy. Yeah, not bad. I I add elder flowers, but just complete disclosure, I ran out of them with my massive batch that I did in the back. Um, but I really like to add elder flowers to that steeping mixture as well. So this is what was cooking, and how, how long do you we cook it? We steep it for 24 hours. So steeping is 24 hours. Slightly lower than simmer. So what temperature is that? Um, it is about um, 100 and 200. 209. 209 degrees, degrees at sea level. At sea level. <laughs> so somewhere in the vicinity of that, you're going to steep your elderberry right. juice um, for 24 hours. Right. And this so is this is um, okay. So you steep it for 24 hours on very low heat, right? Then you take your concoction and you cover it and you go and you put it in your cooler, your refrigerator, refrigerator is what people have at the house. Um, you're gonna put it in your refrigerator and you're gonna let it cool all the way down. So um, 
You may have to transfer that into something smaller so that it cools a little faster. But um, ultimately and what you're wanting to do is to get it all chilled down to. And depending upon how you're doing it at home, mm -hmm. um, if you put it into a roasting pan, mm -hmm. that'll spread out the surface area so it'll cool down much quicker. Much because it's very important for any of the, the fresh vegetables that are in here mm -hmm. that they're not in the... That temperature danger zone. Right. Yeah. So we want to get it down cool as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So, so that's strain. And we've we've chilled this for a significant amount of time, just letting it sort of continue to steep in the, you know, in its stuff. Um, now the stuff that's left over, you can actually reuse that once. You're going to want to do a much more concentrated version with that because it has already been steeped once. It's sort of like reusing a tea bag. It's, you're not going to get the same strength the next time, but you can cook it um, again and just maybe for a little longer, um, a little less water. So. This is now our elderberry concentrate. So I'm going to pour a little, you pour said a, little a, a third, right? Yeah, we're going to make about a third of that and mix that with, that's about right. All right. So this is our concentrate. So a lot of times people will ask me about babies that are under a year old um, because this does contain raw honey. And with um, infants, the recommendation from the AAT is that they don't consume raw honey under a year old. Um, I don't have a problem with honey being in other items that children are eating, like babies are eating, like a cookie or something like that. So this is strictly for raw honey. And since we are adding the raw honey to a cold liquid, there's a reason for that too. I didn't want to heat the honey and destroy the beneficial bacteria, the microflora stuff that's in the raw honey. So you're adding uh, raw honey to a cold liquid, which doesn't make it really fun to stir, but it will eventually dissolve and sort of disperse itself into the liquid, but you're gonna wanna shake it up. So we're doing about a third, that's probably good, about a third honey um, to two thirds of the elderberry concentrate. And what I was saying about the babies is if you just wanted to use the concentrate, you can mix it with something else. You can use agave, you can use uh, apple juice concentrate, something to kind of sweeten it up a little bit because it is pretty, um, pretty strong. Um, another thing that, that we'll do is I'll use the um, spices for like our chai spice um, and add those in. I didn't mention that before because... You can't give them all the secrets. Right. But I add some chai spice there towards the end to sort of flavor it a little bit like fall. And then once the honey's in there, it's, it actually tastes really good. It's not, um, not a really bitter, horribly medicinal tasting elderberry. This is not you need a bigger spoon. Thank you. Um, so anyway, this is the finished one. This has already got honey in it. And um, so this would be ready to be bottled. And you can see the viscosity is a little bit thicker on this than it is on that over there. And um, you can try it. It's good. and um, But it doesn't have to taste good, right? It doesn't have to taste good if you don't want it to. But it does. It does. Um, you don't want to... So like uh, just chug that whole thing? No. So a lot of times people come in and they say, I've run out of elderberry syrup. I take it every single day throughout the winter. You might be able to get away with that, but you don't want to do that. Um, these ingredients are very powerful antivirals and anti-inflammatory agents. And so you can cause some issues in your body by taking those things all of the time. Um, they call it a cytokine storm. And it sounds really ominous and like... It mm. actually sounds fun. So you don't want to start a cytokine storm. Um, but anyway, so you want to do one week on, one week off throughout the winter. If you do feel like you're starting to get sick, you can... Um, our handy dandy assistant over here has passed us a real life spoon, so you can stir that up. Ah. Um, <laughs> so you can um, take this one week on, one week off. But if you feel like you're starting to get sick, you can take um, a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half every three hours throughout your waking hours of, of the day right. until you feel better. So I'm a bullet point guy. Yeah. Give me the bullet points. Elderberries. Organic. Organic. Uh, dried. Organic dried elderberries. Uh -huh. Hawthorn berries. Some, some sort of berry. Some sort of. Rose hips. Swole. Rose hips. Ginger. S ginger. Turmeric. Turmeric. Water. Agua. Yep. And local, local raw honey. honey. Cook it. Mm -hmm. Simmer. Don't boil it. Right. 209 degrees at sea level. Whole day. Whole day. And then cool it. Yep. Quickly. Yep. 
mix it with the honey. Once it's cold, mix it with the honey because you don't want to cook your raw 66 honey. 66%? Something like that. To third. taste. I mean, you, do, you don't have to do okay. a third and two thirds. And then you do don't, one don't give your baby raw Don't honey. give your baby raw honey. That's it. That's it. Cool. Hey, listen, if you liked Behind the Lime, 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 it's been about Behind the Lime, not the food, but yeah, Behind the Lime, then we want you to subscribe. We need for you, we need for you to subscribe. That sounds so awful, doesn't it? I still don't know why. Yeah. But subscribe. It, you know what it does? It just feeds our, your ego? My ego. There you have it. Feed, it just feed, subscribe, feed my ego. Got the last word. No, I didn't.